What's up guys, Billy here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the image transmission settings for the Mavic Pro. Now I made a video on these a few weeks ago and I thought that I'd covered everything, but as it turns out the Mavic Pro actually has an entirely different list of settings aside from the Phantom 4 Pro. So today I figured I'd walk through some of the different terminology and different things that are located inside of the Mavic Pro's settings list just to make some sense of it as this really is one of the most confusing things when it comes to the DJI GO app. To get started, let's pick up our Mavic Pro remote and open up the DJI GO application. Once opened, click the three dots in the top right corner to open up the general settings. Then tap the HD icon to open up the image transmission settings. Once inside, you'll notice that we have quite a few different things to change here. Before we go in depth, let's quickly scroll down and see what we can expect. First we have our channel mode. If we select auto, the settings below will be automatically selected except for the image transmission settings at the bottom. When we select custom, we have more flexibility in what settings we can change. Next we have this big graph that shows us interference levels. This may seem like a jumbled mess, but don't worry, by the end of this, we should be able to make some sense of it. Under that we have our downlink bandwidth, transmission quality, and image transmission settings, all of which we will go into more in depth in just a few moments. Let's go back up to the top and work our way down once more as we go through what each of these settings mean and do. Starting off again with channel mode, I would always recommend using auto so that the drone and remote can establish a connection on their own. It's annoying and cumbersome to have to keep opening the image transmission settings tab each time you notice some interference just to change channels. If we switch over to custom, we do get to choose our downlink bandwidth, but it's not worth it when it comes to ease of use. For the sake of this video, I will use custom to show you some of the different options. The next thing that we have under the channel mode is this big graph, but I'm going to save this for last as once we go through the rest of the settings, it should be easier to make some sense of this. Moving along, we have downlink bandwidth, which gives you two separate options, 20 MHz and 10 MHz. These are known as channel widths. You notice that right now with 20 MHz selected, this highlighted rectangle or channel width is fairly large. Switching it over to 10 MHz cuts the channel width in half. Next up we have the transmission quality, which is the bitrate in megabits or the overall quality of the video being streamed to our remote. This is not able to be changed in custom mode, which I am surprised about, as it is offered on the Phantom series of drones. After our transmission quality, we have the image transmission settings, which is fairly easy to understand. With normal mode, we will get a video transmission in a resolution of 720p. In HD mode, we will get a video transmission in a resolution of 1080p. The only limitation is that you cannot shoot in 4K when in 1080p mode. So think of it this way. In normal mode, you can get 4K at 720p, but in HD mode, you can only get up to 1080p at 1080p. I have mine set to normal, as you guys know, I always shoot in 4K, but if you guys do shoot in 1080p, it may be worth it to switch this over to HD mode. Now finally, the graph. We have a y-axis that is measured in decibel milliwatts. This is one way to measure power, usually when dealing with signal strength. On the x-axis, we have megahertz, which corresponds to the downlink bandwidth that we choose. For instance, if we have 20 selected, the gap between both of these megahertz readings will be 20. If we have 10 selected, the gap between these two numbers will be 10. The line in the middle signifies interference. If the line is higher with a red color to it, there is a strong interference which will cause the connection to be choppy. If the line is green and closer to being flat, then there is little interference. Looking at the top, we can see the precise decibel milliwatts reading, as it can be hard to find the exact numbers from looking along the y-axis. The final thing that we'll notice about this graph is the estimated distance along the right side, accompanied by a line running parallel to the x-axis. The interference line will give you an idea of how much range you can get from the current channel being used. If the line is under 4 kilometers, then you should be good to get the maximum distance out of your Mavic Pro. Again, this is just an estimate, but it should give you a pretty good idea at how far you can fly your drone. One more thing that I want to mention about the graph is that if you're using custom mode, you are able to slide the rectangle across the graph, finding the least interference. But again, it's always best to use automatic, allowing the drone to do that for us. So guys, that's about all for the Mavic Pro transmission settings. I feel like they're so much more confusing than they actually need to be. But if we keep this set to auto, then we don't have much to worry about. Anyways guys, this video is coming to an end. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new around here as I have been trying to upload daily. Also, leave me a comment down below if you have any questions regarding the image transmission settings as they are quite confusing when switching into custom channel mode. But guys, as I said, this video is coming to an end and as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace.